Good girl, what you doing? You waiting for cookies? All right, there you go. So uh, I did a bit of an oopsie. I'm editing this video, and I my like clips. There are a lot of clips that are missing. Transitional clips, which are really important. Uh, they're not. Uh, I don't know where they are. They're not there. I think that maybe I accidentally deleted them when I imported them with the clips from that hanging basket video. That's the only thing I can figure. Anyways, whole point here, this video is going to be a little bit difficult to follow sequentially, like as far as like the video occurring for multiple days throughout the week. Um, and then there's a lot of temperature references that change and go all over the place because the temperature is a forecast kept anyways i just thought i should give a heads up because while it's not unusual for things to be a hot mess around here this week it really it goes to a whole new level <laughs> so enjoy what is this why oh come on dell oh finally getting that time of year where the sky is starting to look all beautiful and mystical and the different shades of blue it's so pretty hey what's up garden friends jeff your tropical plant party how's everybody doing hope you're good i am great it is so nice out spring is springing i don't think that's gonna last though i think there's a cold snap coming up in several days we'll find out i vlog a little bit every day so if there's a cold snap then y'all will know about it it's been very windy hence the wonky crooked palm tree it's fine whatever no big deal i am why am i going over i need to be over here just been out here doing some various spring chores i've decided that even though the cabbage and kale is starting to perk up really look at it it's looking a lot better but like that's just not looking right though is it it's not supposed to be all stretched out like that it's that time of year full-on voltage happening this one's even starting to flower so there's no reason to keep this i'm just going to go through and pull these out i could i talked about this in the last video you can take these and break them off remove some smaller stems and stick them down in there but since these are from last year they're going to want to start flowering right now anyways so there's just no reason to hold on to them because once they want to flower they're going to stretch out and it's just not, it's not going to look pretty they don't really look that great as it is and that's not a pretty cabbage is it certainly not ugly just not doesn't have that desirable cabbage form that we all like to see. I just smacked my lens with that thing. Still waiting it out for the nice weather to come around, so I'm doing little tidbit tasks here and there. I need to run to the nursery and check out some shrubs. I want to know what they've gotten in, so I will probably go do that here in just a minute. I also need to do a little bit of pruning on, uh, what is, what's the thing called? Gerber daisies. That's what I was trying to figure out words are hard sometimes so you can see those are totally done so i just come in i try and cut them as low down in there as i can and that will free up energy for them to put up some new blooms i also have to be very careful to not cut out those buds because i have done that before sometimes if you're not watching the snips just right they can get in there because these pieces right here these stems they hang out where those buds emerge and those buds are always packed in so tightly you know, like look see that tiny little bud there right up against all the old flowers which that's not really anything unusual that's just flowers being flowers right at that one too there we go that's much better there's no reason to hold on to this that's the only problem with the white gerber daisies i always appreciate fun pretty colorful spring flowers i thought the white would look nice in here it's also like one of the only options that they had it was like that or like this deep maroonish red color and it's bright lightens things up has a nice clean look to it but when the flowers start to go on them that just looks hideous which actually when you think about it that's probably a good thing because sometimes it can be easy to forget to prune back the gerber daisies to get those flowers out of there because if you don't do that then you sometimes don't get them pushing out their new growth quite how they need to if you let those old ones sit on there and die and there are a whole bunch of little baby buds coming up in there so in a few weeks this should look nice and colorful again i think the daffodils they're just about done there's not much left going on with those unfortunately but what's left still looks really stinking cute i love these tiny little daffodils tets whatever they were called adorable and those are done i should have some spring bulbs to put in their place i had a bunch of tulips that uh we're going to go in place of these but they ended up blooming at the same time as these so that, you know tulips the issue with them the thing i don't really appreciate about tulips is that their flowers don't last very long <laughs> so these started blooming like three or four days ago which is earlier than i expected at the time i'm ready to swap them out with those daffodils up there 
The tulips will probably be done too, because like I said, they don't have the longest lifespan on their flowers. I may have to figure something else out there. Really, I think that this planter would look just fine without having anything else in it. Just the Gerber daisies and all these cute little violas and alyssum that's in there, that alone. Pretty stick and adorable, but it would be nice to have that height in the background. I don't know, something to think about. Maybe I'll see something at the nursery while I'm out to maybe put in place of those. Not even really time to swap those out yet. I'm gonna keep them in there a bit longer. On that note, since it's nice and cloudy, let's go hit up the nursery, see if there's any fun plants out. Don't know if I'll get any plants. I'm sure I will, because you know I love my plants. And at the end of the video, towards the end of the week, I have a fun new orchid coming in the mail. I have some cool alocasias that are supposed to come sometime this week too, so hopefully, be able to see those. That's a big bird. But yeah, anyways, nursery time. Let's go to the nursery. Oh, so many plants. Look at them all. This is going to be a good day. Look at all that. There's so many pretty plants. Key battery low. What the heck do I do about that? I mean, I, I know I change it, but is there, how? How am I going to, what do I do? I don't see a way to open this thing. Uh-oh. Maybe it's that thing. I don't think that that's it. I don't know what to do here. Is there a slot to put it? No. Oh no. What happens if the battery to this thing dies and you're just screwed and can't drive your car? That seems like a flaw. There should be another. Oh, I bet that thing that says push. Let me see here. When you push it, all it does is lift this piece up here. I'm not sure what that's supposed to. Okay. Whatever. That's neither here nor there. But it could be an issue. Really, I had never thought about that. There needs to be a spot for a key. We can't just have a button. That doesn't seem very secure. Whatever, it's fine. Look at plants. Look at these. These beautiful pink cascade weeping cherries. 12 by 12, zone five. Oh, I bet that's beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at the bark on this maple. That is stunning. It's a Pacific purple maple, 12 by 12, bronze red to purple foliage, wow. Acer circinatum, circinatum. Yep, that is absolutely beautiful. Dwarf peach. And this is a good size too. Usually there, there's one over there. Usually they're a lot smaller. This one's already a pretty good size. These will get to six feet, I believe. The bonfires, is, yeah, bonfire six foot. And they have really pretty like burgundy foliage. Gorgeous plant. Yeah, I didn't know they had the bloomerang lilacs and standards that's pretty neat those look really pretty in the springtime oh so much color i love it so pretty but last year i started to develop an obsession with these blue arizona cypress i didn't think they're hardy here they're seven to nine this is six b i've been seeing them for sale the last couple of years so maybe they are hardy here i mean there's a whole bunch at the nursery so i assume people must be growing them. I trust this nursery. They have a uh, knowledgeable staff, so they must be good. Aren't they awesome though? They have the coolest foliage with that fun frosty blue color to them. They need a sunny dry spot though. You know my garden with all the bananas and elephant ears and things I grow? Not a ton of really dry sunny spots. Maybe that's something I'll just have to enjoy from afar in other people's gardens. Unless I maybe can find a spot. I don't think so though. Keep my eyes open, try and think on that one for a while. Okay, seriously, I am obsessed with these Pacific purple maples. Look at it next to the side. Oh, that's so pretty. And I have a spot that needs a maple in the front yard. That might be a good option. 12 by 12 might fit. I'd have to keep it pruned a little short because I don't know if I want something 12 by 12 right in front of the house, but uh, that's a size that should be manageable to keep in control. Oh, the magnolias. Love them, so much fun color at a table full of pulmonarias. Oh, this is so neat looking. Their foliage is gorgeous. Their flowers are nice to look at too, but that foliage, stunning. These are really pretty. See them? See that little hole there? This is gorgeous. Yeah, I have that area on top of the hill where I was debating mulch or gravel. This Man, this would be beautiful up there. However, it is uh, very expensive. It's a better price than I've seen at a lot of places. I would need, uh, it would probably cost like two grand to pull that off, but wouldn't it look cool to fill a huge area up with something like this and have like just a few simple plants worked in with those tiny pebbles underneath it? Something to think about. I'm at Lowe's because I need it. 
I didn't need anything. That's the, I don't need anything from here. I just wanted to see what they had. And they have a lot. They have everything. Things that you don't normally even see out until like May. Impatience, petunias, begonias. It's supposed to be like 30 degrees here in a few days, so I don't know what they're going to do about that. That's pretty. But it's also incredibly crowded though, so I can't really film here. I don't like to film and get other people on the camera. That just seems rude. Oh, my favorite azalea, Autumn Carnation. I love them. I'll come over here so we can talk real quick. So, after being at the last nursery and talking to some people who work there and then talking to some people who are here and then a word of mouth from some other people who work with growers, they're, like, already running out of pansies <laughs> in a lot of places, the suppliers are. And um, it's just now time to start planting those, at least here in St. Louis. So I'm torn. They have the impatience that I usually don't plant until May. And I'm thinking, should I just go ahead and get them? I don't want to have to take care of them until it's time to put them in the ground, but what if I wait? I don't like this. This is not, I don't like this situation. I'm not gonna lie, this is really throwing my brain off. A lot of these plants shouldn't be out yet, like I mentioned, and I'm like, my brain is on the spring planters and I'm surrounded by summer stuff. I mean, there are plenty of spring plants out. These are the magnificent violas beautiful. Planted a bunch of those last year and really liked them. I mean, even the roses are out and fully flushed. The roses are usually out right now, but they're not usually <laughs> fully flushed and ready to go. Usually in my area, it's just pots with sticks in them. I mean, these are landscape roses. That's a little different. Well, not a little different, completely different. Everything right here is pretty normal. It's what I was seeing back over there with the petunias and begonias and impatiens and just things that not normally out yet. Oh, Lewisias are so pretty. Wow. That is beautiful. Yeah, I'm not, like, not to complain, because, I mean, it's like a dream come true to not have to wait until May for the fun plants to be out. It's just, like I said, really throwing my brain off. Even got the Tritoscanthias out. Calibrax. Those are good cool season plants. Those make sense to have out. It actually always used to annoy me that I had to wait. Everybody had to wait until, like, late April, May to get a hold of those because they're fine to go ahead and put out when, as long as frost free. They can handle a little frost, but not the best form when they haven't been established. Okay, I'm gonna go. I don't know what to do. Oh, look at this cute little fly. It's so tiny. Never thought I'd say cute little fly. Do you want to go outside? Would you like some freedom? Go on, be free. Go on. There you go. Yeah, I don't know what to, why is my autofocus not working? Come on camera, did you not come to work today? Home Depot's right there, should I just do it? I've already been to Lowe's in the nursery to Greenscape here in St. Louis. Wonder if I should check that out. The only thing left that I need are super tunias and I don't, I don't want them yet. It's too early, I don't want to have to take care of them for another month or so until it's time to put them in the ground. But it's right there. And I'm not, like, as timid about doing outdoor things. Like, I don't really go into any buildings, but I'll go do outdoor stuff with a mask on, just stay away from people. I'm only pointing that out because I talk a lot about staying in, and um, I am still doing that, but with the outdoor stuff, I'm not as hesitant. I just, just like, want the, everybody to stay away from me with their cooties. I'm here. May as well see what's in there. It's right here. I got my hand sanitizer in my pocket. May as well see what's in here. I haven't been anywhere since the last vlog when I went out. Actually, well, that's not true. I went down to the southern part of the state to get dose one of my Pfizer vaccine. Get the second dose in a couple of weeks, so I'm like maybe 20% immune right now, if even. Not really factoring that into anything, because it's still got to keep away. Avoid the cooties. Oh, lavender. None of my lavender made it through that cold snap. $8.98. I have to be really particular about the lavenders that I choose because it's so wet and humid. They can be really tricky. Gosh, these ranunculus are so pretty. I love them. Did I just say ranunculus? Anemones. These are anemones and they're absolutely beautiful. I don't know why I said, I mean, they're kind of ranunculus -y. Not really, actually. So I just realized you all may not have any idea what I'm saying. I'm wearing a mask and haven't been talking up because I'm out in public and feeling a little bit more shy today than I usually am for some reason when I'm filming with these. Okay, these are ranunculus. Some osteospermums. Remember back in the day when osteospermums were typically, they were orange with the purple center? I loved those. I never see those anymore. Those were my favorite ones. Of just like the classic annual osteospermums. And that's just what you used to see the most often. I like the pink ones. Proven Winners has some pretty ones. Just in case, may as well grab a cart. Not much to see outside, which is more typical of how things are this time of year, but the houseplants are looking pretty good. Also, I'm not, something's wrong with my camera. It's staying like really zoomed in on things, so I apologize. Everything is such a close up shot. 
don't know what that's about. Some zigzags and hanging baskets for $12.98. That's pretty good. Especially considering the prices I've been seeing on houseplants. They're getting up there. Really getting expensive. Oh, you're dry and sad, but still cute. Yeah, see, not much. Ferns and typical spring plants. Whoa. Those are intense. Doesn't say what variety, just that it's a Paracolis. Gorgeous. Vivid, vivid, vivid. They're more blue in person. Really blue. No shortage of Boston ferns. At least not yet. And then some shrubbery. And lots of space for more plants to come in. That's, like I said, this is more what things typically look like here this time of year. Yeah, that's enough. Got to see it. Time to go. Uh, look who's still here. Couldn't possibly be a different fly. It's my new buddy. You gonna be hanging out with me? Oh. All right, all good things must come to an end. I'll miss you. I did end up getting a few things that I wasn't planning on getting, but, you know, at, like I talked about when I was at the other store from what I'm being told by people, the best plan of action right now is if you can get your hands on them to go ahead and get them because things are moving so quickly. It's fine, whatever. Just have to keep a lot of these in the garage during the cold snaps for the next few weeks. They're not ready to go on the ground yet. But here I have an entire flat of these Sun Patience Deep Rose. The problem with the Sun Patience is it is absolutely impossible, packing peanut there, it is impossible to show their flowers on camera. Like I have never been able to find the right lighting or setting to do them justice. These right here are just the compact hot pink which is a nice like bubblegum pink flower. The compact deep rose is like an intense coral color that just looks sort of orange on camera, but in person, it's like a really, really nice vibrant pink coral. It, you get it. I have a bunch of those. I still need to find some of the compact orange because I like to alternate these in the garden. Some of these are going to be put into baskets and beds in the front, and then some of these are gonna be used to alternate throughout the garden bed here in the backyard during the summertime. So I'm glad I was able to get a hold of those. Hopefully I'll be able to find the orange ones too. While we're looking at impatience, here's a whole bunch more. Just white, orange, and pink. That's that, that's all there is to it, just three flats. Those are going to go down on this berm. That furniture's going to be going in the front of that berm. It's gonna be all impatience and caladiums. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. I'm, that's like, I think, one of the things I'm the most excited about this year. It's just having a big wall of color down there. That's the uh, spider web. I already have one of these, but it reverted. So I got another one because I wanted one that hadn't reverted. And this one has really nice variegation on it. Isn't it pretty? It's, I'm pretty sure it's the spider web. I think it is. That's what it was labeled as. It's not the camouflage. I don't know. It was pretty. I love fatsias. They're nice because you can bring them outside before any of the other tropicals because they can take a lot more cold. They have those big, bold, shiny leaves on them, and I love me a big, shiny leaf. Couple of Persian shields. These have become kind of a trendier plant in the garden, so sometimes they're a little bit harder to get a hold of. Last year I didn't find any, but I also, you know, last year I really wasn't out at the nurseries because of all the stuff that was going on with the surgeries and everything. Since they had them, I went ahead and got them. They're, these are an easy one to have to keep in the garage or even in the house if I needed to, since it's only going to be for a few weeks. They're pretty tough, sturdy plants. I'm glad that I got those. They have the most beautiful foliage don't they it's absolutely stunning i really should have gotten more than two but i just i don't want to have a bunch of excess annuals you know what i mean i don't want to have plants scattered all over the place so i only got what i knew that i had a spot for and i was going to use I just, gosh they're so shiny though i feel like i could just fill the entire garden with these and i would be perfectly happy with it Garden Meister fuchsias, one of my favorites. Nice tropical fuchsia that does not like to focus. I remember that from when I had to film the video on these. These flowers do not like the camera. They're a nice hot pinky color, looking kind of orange. Maybe, I don't, is it just the light? Why does everything look weird? That's a little bit better. They're more pink than this in person, but they're a fun tropical annual. Also can be grown as a perennial. I think these are 8B and up, maybe 9 and up. I honestly don't remember. And you can take them inside. They'll do fine with some bright and direct light. A really bright direct light in the house would probably be okay as long as it's not for too terribly long. Fun, easy plants, and the hummingbirds and pollinators absolutely love them. And these, if you watch my garden tour, I was talking about my honeysuckle, the major wheeler. The flowers on the major wheeler look nearly identical to these in person. So that's, I think, why I like the honeysuckle so much because it's such a bright tropical vibe to it. Last but not least, some of my favorites. I already have some of these in the growth space, but 
I've managed to find a couple more, so I got a couple more of them. Because similar to that Persian shield, these are one of those things where it's like you just find them or you don't. I don't see them every year for sale. I see them most years though. They're just a variegated Tritoscanthia. Really nice pinstripe pink purple variegation on these. They revert like no other, so you do have to stay on top of pruning them, but that's worth it. Look at that. And the more sun these get, the more intense that pink gets on them too. Like these get to be nearly a hot pink. Like you like the Nanook? That's a pretty Tritoscanthia. In my opinion, if you like pink, these will knock your socks off. Oh, and it actually has a label. Usually they just say very good Tritoscanthia. So this is pink stripes. That's what they're calling it. Tritoscanthia, Paletta, Secretia, Paletta, Purple Heart Plant, all those things. Really pretty common plants. Usually easy to grow, especially if you can get them in the ground, then that's when they'll do the majority of their growing. Absolutely beautiful. It's like some of my favorites. So easy to propagate too. They had a whole flat of these and I was like, I can just get two of these. Cause when a piece breaks off, like this one broke off, you just stick it back down in the soil and boom, new plant. So it just seems like a silly thing to buy a whole bunch of, right? When I can just split them apart and make a whole bunch more. That and like I said, I'm nearly positive that I have at least one of these, maybe two of them in the gross space inside. So don't need any more than that. Last year in this garden bed over here, you can't see, I'm doing a project over here. You have to wait and see. So things are a little bit wonky. I'm holding the camera to the side. Went purple heart plant, lemon coral sedum, purple heart plant, lemon coral sedum, all the way through there. I thought about doing the same thing, but with the variegated heart plants this year, but really know if I want to. We'll wait and see how many of those I can actually propagate and give that some more time. Oh, and I picked up a fan palm here. It's got a nice girthy start on it. Sometimes these things are so puny when they come in. They're a clustering fan palm. You can see this has a offshoot coming up on it. These are good palms to have around if you live someplace like me with cold winters because you can move them inside for just like a couple months and they'll be good outside where I am in zone 6b. These are fine outside, I would say at nine months out of the year, something like that. Maybe 10 months, just depends on how mild the winter is. If we have a bad winter, maybe seven months. You just never know. They're not going to be as reliable as the windmill palms, that's for sure. Much more sensitive to water inside the crowns. I've learned that the hard way, particularly tap water, that is. So this will have to go in a space where it's not gonna be anywhere near any of my drip sprayers or my sprinklers, cause that will, it'll just rot and die. That'd be a big waste. Hey buddy, this one keeps running up behind me, banging his head into my ankles. Do you think it's time to eat? Anybody feed the dogs? Toby, did anybody feed the doggies? Come on. Yeah, let's go eat, good boy. All right, that's everything I do. I need to fix the hanging basket from the video that came out prior to this one. I'll go feed the dogs. Maybe we can work on that basket and hopefully get some other planters done. I don't know, the forecast is taking a turn. It's gonna get really cold here pretty soon, like a couple nights in the 20s. So I'm gonna go too heavy with planting things up because I'm just gonna have to move them into the house here in like a day. What would be the point of that, right? Oh, pool salt. I knew something was calling me to Lowe's. Like there was a reason I was supposed to go there and it was to get salt for the pool. I for totally forgot. I was blinded by plants. That's why the water's all murky like this because it needs salt. The irony is when I put the salt in, it's gonna get more murky. I need like 400 pounds, about 10 bags. It can wait though. The salt machine, there's like a machine that converts the salt to chlorine, it like electrically charges it or something to disinfect and then it turns back into salt. I don't know, I mean, it's sciencey stuff, it's complicated. But the point here is that that machine doesn't even work until the water is 60 degrees, which it is not that warm yet. So doesn't really matter yet, it's fine. No big deal, it's just it's kind of some milky water. What I do need to do though is uh, I got this basket over here that could use some fixing. I did a hanging basket video. Maybe you saw it, just the video prior to this one. And uh, I had it hanging up here from this hook. It was actually hanging from a hook that was hanging from that hook and uh, that hook broke. I was standing right next to it, made a really funny boingy sound and startled me and probably could have knocked an eye out. Good thing it didn't. And then the basket came tumbling down right there and I need, to, it's got to get fixed. This thing, such a pain in the butt. This is one of those projects. Oh, hi buddy. Hello, hi. Right in my face, don't put your nose on the lens. Don't do it. One of those projects where I had been looking forward to doing it for a really long time. And uh, it was supposed to be simple and everything just kept going wrong with it. Like I started it with a smaller basket. Wasn't going to work with the plants that I had that I wanted to put in there. And then I was like, well, can I, get a bigger basket sent over here really quickly because 
I didn't want to go out again. I had just been out, you know, getting those plants and things. I'm trying to not go out often, you know, I'm trying to keep that pretty infrequent. And then I remembered, oh, there's some in the attic. Finally find a basket that's going to work. And I tried to film the video probably three times. It just wasn't working for various reasons, background noise or phone calls and things just things just kept getting in the way so i finally get it filmed and then the thing just comes falling down what the heck that's why that video ended rather abruptly because i was just over it at that point i was like okay maybe the basket's just not meant to happen right now yeah these plants are looking really sad really really sad they'll be okay it's not the end of the world just need to get in here and fix this liner something's making a weird sound up against the house. It's really windy right now. Gonna be some broken stems and branches and things. That's okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna work on getting this fixed up and I guess I'm gonna, going to need to put it in the garage because the load of night's 27. So I'm not even gonna get it hung up. I don't see a reason to even attempt to do that because it's all the way up there. I have to get a ladder out to get it hung up. I'm not gonna hang it from another hook because that was terrifying having that metal thing pop in my face. Unless I can find a wrought iron hook. I might be able to find, either way I should just put this away for one night while well, it's gonna be cold, or maybe two nights. It might be cold for a few nights, I'm not sure. This poor thing, look at how many roots this one lost. There's like nothing left. It should still be okay, the alyssum are tough. This one too, this lost a lot of its roots also. You can tell the, where the basket fell, it was on that end. These things happen, not the end of the world, it's just when it happened, I didn't have time to fix it. I had dinner plans that had family coming over for dinner and it was one of those things where I was just so happy to get the video filmed but I only had so much time set aside to get it done and then when it fell I was like I don't have another 15 or 20 minutes to try and get this fixed up so I was like you know what video's over that's enough we're done here I had just had enough of all of that mess oh poor plants oh they're so sad that's kind of cute and pretty though I'm gonna put that in a little cup in the house. Oh, smells fantastic too. Well, just like in its original form, it's not perfect, but it'll do. It's going to have to do. I was going to put the pansies back like I had it originally, but this is just a lot easier. I have them all up against the side and then I'm going to fill in here around this dianthus. I thought about popping a few tulips in there, but that's just going to look weird because the tulips are a lot bigger than the dianthus, so it's fine. <laughs> No big deal, everything's fine, right Toby? Right Toby? Yeah, everything's okay. Yes, I just need to get this back filled and water it in and then I'll let it sit out and enjoy the semi-cloudy day. I remember to get it tucked back in, put it inside the garage tonight because these poor plants have already been through enough. I don't think that having temperatures in the 20s is going to be great for them. The pansies would be fine. I don't think it's really going to affect them very much and the creeping jenny is really not going to care. Lobularia is right on the line, and then we have all these delicate blooms here on the dianthus. The lobularia, they can take an okay amount of colds. Look, not a ton, but they can take some lower 30s, usually not a big deal for them, some light frost. But uh, I think that being like 27 or so, two nights in a row, that would be too much, especially when it's springtime. In the fall, I wouldn't worry about it as much because they will have had all growing season to establish themselves and get to be nice, big healthy hardy plants but these have all just been unpotted and then they suffered a tragedy and fell i think they already have enough recovering to do it i'll take them then hey baby toby what a good boy it's such a good boy you're really dirty why are you so dirty toby you just had a bath it's only been like two days and there's like literally just dirt flying out of your fur it's that time of year lots of shedding oh my goodness toby so much shedding. I'm gonna have to take the curry comb to you. Take you out to the front yard when it gets more breezy and just let the wind take all that away. Ugh. Good morning, Pumpkin. Good morning. Just turn your back as soon as I point the camera at you. Maybe if I just set it down. No, you're gonna leave. Got somewhere to go? Okay, never mind. Beautiful morning. Very chilly outside, but got some plant mail. Yeah, plant mail's exciting, right, buddy? You're always stretching. You do good stretches. Got some alocasias here. This is impure. Imperial red, which is, I mean, as you, it's an alocasia, right? It's a point leaves pointing upwards. A nice, pretty reddish pink stem on it. From what I've seen with these, they don't get too terribly big. The main appeal to them, because their foliage is just 
it's just a green alocasia. It's mostly going to be that they have that nice color. Yeah, the leaves are boring. It's all about these long, nice, colorful stems. That should look pretty cool when that gets bigger. They're neat looking plants. And then I also got two of these aloe. Sorry, hello, you wanna focus? Sarians. Should have the other one here too. I would rather be showing these outside with the natural light, but it's misting, so maybe we'll take a better look at them later. But I really just needed to get them out of the box. I don't wanna leave them in those dark boxes for too terribly long. The Sarians, look at the, look at, they have the prettiest stems as well. These, however, have really cool foliage on them. And these, when they get bigger, which sometimes it can be a challenge to get them to a larger size, but once they get up to a nice big size, these leaves look really, really cool. And they already look pretty cool. But usually when you see these grown indoors, they tend to be really long and somewhat lanky with some just really stretched out foliage. When I've grown these outdoors before, I've had much better luck with them. I've done okay with them inside, but it's just they get more of that lankiness to them. They are one of those alocasias that will be a bit temperamental when it comes to how they're watered indoors. Outside, nowhere near as big of a deal. And I have just the perfect spot for these outside in the landscapes. I can't wait to be able to get these plants out there. These are from Brian's Botanicals. I still haven't gotten the wrapping paper, newspaper -y stuff out of there. I need to go get a box cutter and cut all that tape off of these. Just a few little cuties. Been wanting some of these for a long time. I had some a long, long, long time ago and they were pretty dang cool. So I'm looking forward to having them and giving them another shot, giving them a go again. The guy is finally cleared up and it's time to go ahead and start moving some of these plants. And I got to take in the sun impatience. I should probably take the bulbs in. These are all of the hyacinths and tulips that got planted up just a few weeks ago. Look at all the growth they have on them. Just starting to pop up, have something going on in almost every single one of these pots. I, yeah, it's supposed to be 29 tonight. They're saying maybe 23 the night after. So since I'm taking other stuff and I may as well take those too. So get those, definitely not leaving these out or those Persian shields, those have got to come in. All the little baby impatients, anything else? Oh yeah, the hanging basket. Don't want to forget about that. That actually perked up very nicely already. I am going to leave it the way it is. I, there's enough of a ring around here between the pansies and that dianthus that if I come across some Gerber daisies, I'm definitely going to be filling that gap in. Not because like I feel like the gap needs to be filled in, just because I think it would be cute. I don't want to see Gerber daisies out my window. And then I have all these daffodils right here and they have some little hyacinths starting to come up with them too. Those should probably come in as well. Windmill palms, they're fine. For the most part, I haven't really moved anything out that I don't think can take that cold. Everything out here should be able to take the uh, mid to upper 20s. Even the fat seas, they should be totally fine too. So they were fine with the multiple occasions we had in the 20s in the fall. They've been out here for a pretty long time and they've dealt with plenty of frost. They should be okay, right? Yes, I think so. They'll be all right. I, mean, I guess we'll find out. I almost forgot about this too. That's going in also. I'm gonna put that in my kitchen window. There's not really room for it, but we'll make it fit. The more the merrier in the kitchen window, right? What does it matter? It's not like I'm doing anything on the counters anyways. Kitchen counters, they're just for plant storage these days. Oh, and I should, yeah, those should definitely go in too. That's enough talking. I'm gonna start loading up the gorilla cart and getting things moved into the garage. And I think Friday it's supposed to warm back up and it looks like it's gonna keep getting warmer and warmer and warmer after that. So I do have one planter project left that I really wanna do, but there wasn't any sense in doing that right now because the, you know, cold. What would be the point? So we'll just wait till Friday. And that doesn't matter to you guys. We'll be back and hopefully the plants will be back outside. I could have just waited and brought them all back out and done this all in one shot. Nobody would have known the difference. That didn't even occur to me. Whatever. Cut back in a couple days or maybe that um, orchid. Hopefully that's going to come in the mail today before the cold gets here. That could be a thing. Hopefully that orchid's going to get here. Like now. Right now. <laughs> this is going to get really cold. Cold finally passed. It only got down to... I think the lowest temperature that I saw in my sensors was 36. So that's pretty good because there were a lot of areas that, it, well, my weather app is what I should say, got down to 27, but not back here. I had two different sensors out and coldest was 36 over the two nights. So that's good. Look at what we got here. They're pretty horribly backlit, but 
You think you get it? No, how about a better look at this? It's an orchid I've been waiting to get for such a long time. I'm glad I was finally able to get my hands on one of them. This is BC North Miami. Like I said, I saw this on TD Moore. He has an orchid channel, plant channel. I'll link it down in the description. He is a fantastic source for orchid knowledge. I don't do that much with orchid videos anymore. I still grow them. I don't really talk about their care all that often. And he unboxed one of these not too long ago. It was sent to him from Florida Suncoast. And then just a few days later, I was able to finally find one on, I think it was eBay. Pretty short. Sure. Took a minute to get here, but look at those beautiful flowers. They're a little washed out. They're not the easiest to get on camera. These flowers right here are fading, but they give a better example of the pink on the petals and then the yellow inside that lip right there. Still a whole bunch of little baby buds in there that haven't opened up yet, so have some more time to enjoy the flowers on this one. And this is a nice big established plant. It's in a four inch basket, but it really, it could get moved up probably right now. I'm not going to, not until the weather warms up. For right now, I'm just going to let it chill and do its thing. When it's done flowering, I'll focus on bumping it up to a larger basket. Great orchid, smells really nice too. It has a, like a sweet kind of, I, I don't actually don't really know how to describe the smell. Jesus, you gotta trust me, it smells good. <laughs> like it's not a vanilla smell. It's like a, um, maybe a hint of fruit, like a sweet fruit perhaps. And that's just the way I perceive the smell. People have different perceptions of scent, so. I've only noticed the fragrance at night. This did come yesterday, but I was waiting until it was light out to film it because it just would look a lot better. The reason that I've wanted one of these is because it's supposed to be a cross that'll bloom up to three times a year, if not more, which isn't like that unheard of with a BC. BC meaning Brassavola cattleya. That's a cross between two orchids. When you get the Brassavolas, particularly the ones with the nodosa, which is one of the most common ones, an excellent beginner orchid if you're looking for a beginner orchid. They look fairly similar to this, but the flowers are more white. I think they're maybe just a smidge smaller on the regular nodosa. And the growth tends to be just a smidge bit more robust. And the growth tends to be just a smidge bit more robust and taller, depending on what type you get. There are various variations out there. I'm not going to talk too much about it because, like I said, I don't want to go into the care and everything. But they're pretty solid orchids with good blooming habits fairly easy to grow and they smell wonderful absolutely wonderful i love it i already gave it like a probably a 15 minute soak when it showed up in the mail just in room temperature water a teeny tiny little squirt of some seaweed kelp extract just to give it a little boost but i mean just a little bit not very much at all i forgot to take the queen palm in so that was a big oopsie but it looks totally fine got really lucky there i'm not gonna bore everybody with bringing the plants back out that seems silly so i'm probably just going to go ahead and wrap it up what's this doing over here we've got a bag of grout and oh the pool company came out and regretted the pool which I've been waiting for them to do for three years now happy that that's finally done the grout up here around the steps right below the marble and the steps had been chipping out for the last couple of years and that's a bad I want the water to go back behind the liner because that can end up making the liner bubble out and gets wrinkles and then it can leak it's time to get a new liner anyways probably but still good to have that done not exactly sure why they decided the spot to dispose of their garbage was in the middle of the garden bed but okay not really okay that was rude don't appreciate that but i'll fix it later in other exciting news do you see this look at look at i didn't know if they were gonna make it was seeming real sketchy there after that cold blast in february but there they are and they're nice tall gross this mulch piles probably close to three feet high. So that means that these are starting out with three feet of trunk. That is amazing. I always want the bananas to hold on to as much trunk or pseudo stem is really what it's called. I want them to hold on to as much of that as possible throughout the winter because that's that much more growth you can get out of them. If it's a variety where you want fruit or flowers from, that's also really important because they need to maintain a certain amount of growth to be able to flower the next year. Most bananas, not all, but most bananas take at least 18 to 24 months to start to fruit and flower including the baju. That's what these are. I know the view's not very exciting here, but it's going to be pretty soon. That's really exciting to think. It's been in the 30s for the last few days. It's going to be beautiful next week. Really nice and warm in the 70s, maybe some low 80s. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know if I trust the forecast fully. I think we might be out of the woods for the cold, but I just can't say for sure. 
I know that this has probably been driving people crazy, but every time I set it up straight, it just pops back over. So just why mess with it? I'm gonna let it do its thing for now. It's fine like that. Also, plants are rolling up in the mail. Here's a little teaser right there. Some stuff that's coming in. There will probably be a fair amount of plant hauls and plant shoppings this year. You know, last year didn't do that because one was fairly sick last year, and then two, the whole COVID thing, like it was just so sketchy. We didn't know what was going on. Now, like it's fairly well known if you're outdoors and you're wearing a mask and you keep your distance from people, probably going to be fine, right? And then once my vaccine, the second dose sets in, I'm not gonna be anywhere near as worried, but still gonna be really careful. And there's a whole season of gardening to make up for. I didn't really get to do much last year. So I'm looking forward to getting these buttes opened up. This is an order that's coming in multiple loads. That was just one of many that are to come. I'm gonna take this back inside. I do think that it would be fine out here because the Lodonite's only like 50 or something like that. It has flowers on it and fresh buds. I don't want to encourage any bud blasts or anything like that. Isn't it pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. I absolutely love the wild, jungly, just like almost naturalized look you start to get when the orchids start to take over their boxes and the roots start to grow everywhere. Repotting it is going to be interesting because it's it looks like it's really in there, but you can make it work. You don't even need to worry about that. I'm gonna go now. Got a lot to do holiday weekend with the family and everything, which is exciting. Didn't get to do that last year. Cause again, COVID. Now that family members are vaccinated, it's not anywhere near as risky to sit down on the table and have a meal. Isn't that nice? Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. I'm gonna, I swear, I'm gonna get that dead branch cut off of there. I promise I'll do it. Spring plans. The cold finally moved out from everybody else. I know it wasn't just here. Cold snap went all the way down south and east and really got a lot of places. I feel worse for the people who are further south where the plants were like already out and doing their thing. But here, uh, because I didn't rush to move the plants out, it wasn't a huge deal. I just, you saw it, just moved some stuff in and everything else was fine. I also cheated though and turned the pool heater on and that's gonna help create a little bit of a microclimate around the area. I don't think it's gonna do much for the palm tree when it's all the way up there, but it probably helped with a couple degrees. It wasn't piping hot, it was just like up to 65, which needs to be done anyways because gotta get the pool salt in there and that won't dissolve until the water is at least 55 or the coordinator won't run. We already talked about this. Oh and everybody's had a pool salt so just gonna, I don't know, keep it fresh water. Let's put koi in here. Anyways, <laughs> As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing, baby.